Amen. I was telling you last night about the anointing. And because some of you have not been exposed to what we call the Holy Spirit revival, it started 1904, about 100 years now, in Azusa Street. And uh, William Seymour, he was a black man. And when the revival came, singing also came. And while the people were singing, a lot of miraculous things will be taking place. That's what, why you'll find that the churches that came out of the Pentecostal revival, they're singing churches. If you have been an Anglican, a Catholic, a Methodist, a Presbyterian, all that you'll sing, when you sing, is so dull that the children will be going to sleep. Holy, 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 Lord, God, all my. That's what I sang in the Anglican church for many years. I never woke up. And then I got to, you know, these white garment churches. They didn't have salvation. But they, you know, those people, uh, they can sing. And when they sing, their hands, I said, this is something. And then I got near them. I said, I wasn't born again. But, you know, just the singing. And I went to the drummers there. I said, how do you do this? Thing? Then they showed me. And I took the drum away from them. And I'm telling you, you think I'm singing now. When I began to beat that drum, all the evil spirits in town <laughs> will come upon those people. <laughs> and then, 1963, somebody invited me to a church. And I told him, please, you're inviting me to church. You come to my own church, Ladura Church. Well, where our white, well, our white outside, but black inside. And then, and when you know I wear that thing like this, and I feel inspired. And I'm telling even at that time, I refused to have girlfriend. I refused to you know, do anything because I was in my class in the secondary school in the 50s. I was the spiritual man. If anybody had a dream, it's me they will come to, to come and interpret for them. Because they knew I was different. Girlfriend, no, because I said I wanted the spirit of God. I wanted the power of God. It's a long time. 1959, I fasted for three days. Because I was looking for the Holy Ghost. I wasn't even born again. And I was in the Aladora church. In the White Garment church. And uh, in this school, it was a school for an atheist. And that school for an atheist, he taught us there was no God. I said, no. I will show this man there is God. And I wasn't born again. And then I will run away from school. I will go to church to go and beat drum. And when they take attendance, because other people will go to town, they go to dance, they go to find women, they go to do prostitution. When they go like that, when I go, I go to church. And some of the people will go to church with me. After church, they will go for prostitution. I will come back straight. And when I come back, sometimes it's in the night. And all the idol worshippers, because there's a river between our school and, and the town, all the idol worshippers, they'll be worshipping the idols. And all the bad, bad people in town, you know, on the street, on the road, in the night. Because sometimes we finish 11, 30, 12 o'clock, because I believed I went to serve God. And God honored my foolishness and faith. And I will come back like this, wearing my white garment. And I put my candle in my hand. You know, we burn candle. And from the church, all through that river road to the town, that candle will be burning like this. And if the candle, hot candle, the one that dropping on my hand, I will never shake my hand. I believe that that was part of my sacrifice serving God. And one night I went out like that. And some other students went out. And when I came back, they said they called the role. The principal discovered those who are not in school. I said, not me. I went to serve God. And the following morning in the assembly, they called us together. And they said, all these students, they mentioned their names except my name. And they suspended them. And they said, they will come back from the suspension up when the exam was starting. And they came back. Those who failed, they dismissed them. And I still remained in that school. Because... When I served God, even in my ignorance and sin and no salvation, I did it with all my heart. 
And the Lord knew. And so when this uh, person invited me, I said, come to our church. I said, you come to my church and see. But I followed him. And when I got there, they sang. Oh, I said, looks like this one is like, I, I thought, this is like our church. Because they too, they were singing. And then eventually I got the singing. I got the wordings of the song. 1964, the 5th of April, I gave my life to the Lord. Immediately, I began to learn real, real music. And I bought an organ. And I began to practice every day. And I sing, and I play, and I compose, and I transpose. I do quite a lot of things in music. And it was um, 1973. 72, end of 72, that I went to Omahia. And those who are from Omahia, the Masters Vessels Group. And uh, they, they, those people too, they can sing. And then when I had the singing again, I said, wow, this is something. And it was there I began to hear about Charles G. Finney. I had some friends there. And then some Pentecostal things. And now I began to read, really read now. And T.L. Osborne and John G. Lake and all these people. And I said, if I did all that when I was a sinner, now that I came to the Lord, then I pushed myself inside. I said, I'm going to swim in the river of the Spirit. It took me years. It took time. It took time. It took sacrifice. It took consecration. It took dedication. But one day, great day, I'd been saved and sanctified. And then on the 23rd of October, 1974, it was in Birmingham, in England. I'd been reading, and because I'd been reading, I'd read the book of a particular man, and that book interested me. And he was living in uh, Birmingham. And I, I went for my postgraduate something, but I abandoned the postgraduate thing, and I went to Birmingham. And then I, I said, uh, I'm, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit, and this what he said is very simple. And he said, how simple it is it? He said, look at Luke chapter 11. And then he said, ask, it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. Everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth. And he that knocketh to him, that knocketh shall be opened. If ye being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall, they, shall your Father, who is in heaven, give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? He said, then he asked me, who are the people he will give to them that ask him? What do you want to do now? You came from London to Birmingham. What do you want to do? I want to ask him. Will he give you? I said, I asked before. He said, answer my question. Then he told me, read that thing again. I read it again. Then he asked me a question. Will he give you? I said, I've been praying for him. He said, read it again. And I read it again. Will he give you? Then it dawned on me. I said, yes. When I said yes, the spirit came. We came here to worship God. And that's why we get what we get. It's not just to attend Congress. I've attended other conferences too. And you'll be surprised. When I go to a conference, and some of the people preaching there, because it's not a deeper life conference, sometimes they even make some mistakes in their interpretation of the Bible. But when I get, once I'm going to a conference, I say, I'm going to get something. And some of you here, you don't understand coming for a conference. And that's why I'm deliberately doing some things. Sometimes I take time deliberately just to teach you and by practical example. I went to a particular conference. And the people that were preaching there, all those people, sometimes they, they, they was, that conference, they took Isaiah chapter 6. And they tried to interpret from verse 1 to verse 8. While they were preaching and interpreting, in my mind I was saying, look at this message and look at this chapter. And I could have given them real, real expository study on that. But I said, here I am for a conference. I just listened to them. And then during the break, they said, if you need counseling, come to line up here. And then we'll appoint counselors for you. And think about general superintendent of Deeper Life Bible Church. And that time, the church in Lagos was about 7,000. And when they said, if you need counseling, I went to line up. The Nigerians who saw me there, I they said, Pastor, they were not deep alive. And then they were greeting me. I said, thank you. I came here for conference. <laughs> they wanted me to come. I said, no, I'm not counseling. I came for counseling myself. And those Nigerians were surprised. When I attend a conference, I attend a conference. 
If I don't want to attend, I don't attend. When I attend, I give my whole heart to it. Then they appointed somebody that would counsel me. And I sat down. And then, before counseling me, he wanted to know me. What do you do? Are you a pastor? Are you a traveling evangelist? I told him what I did. What was your background? I told him, mathematics. What did you do after you left university? I was lecturing. When did you become this and that? I told him. When, what did you start with? I said 15 people. How many are you now? I said about 7,000. He said, wait. <laughs> because they had given those counselors 30 minutes. And they told them outside, they said, the counselor has 30 minutes for each person. And uh, so he went to tell them, I'm counseling somebody, it will take more than 30 minutes. Therefore, all the other people for me, let them go. And he gave me, I think, about two hours. And then he said, come back tomorrow. It so happened that the person who was counseling me was the one who started Coca-Cola in Atlanta, Georgia. And he was in the boardroom. And he planned how Coca-Cola will reach the whole world. And then he said, come the following day. And he told me the story of Coca-Cola. And he said, as I see you, you will do something with the gospel that Coca-Cola has done. <laughs> and then, I've not finished. All the plans that they had in the Coca-Cola boardroom, he tabled everything down. And he applied it to the gospel. And I put all those things down. And then when I came back to Nigeria, I restructured things at that time. That's how deeper life has become like this. When you attend a conference, attend with your heart. Whatever we're doing here, let it be in your heart. Don't look like, you know, you're in the conference, you come to do your normal thing, you normally do at a general retreat. Because when I, God knows my heart, he knows my sincerity. And he knows that when I go to a place, I'm there with all my heart. I forget every other thing. And you are my children. I want you to be like me. That's why I'm running around, you know, at my age. And, you know, if you're not doing it well, I'll shake you up and say, why are you doing that? Does old man like trouble? <laughs> the reason I'm making all the trouble is that, you know, gray ears are coming. Okay, they're not just coming, they're there already. And I know that if Jesus tarries, I will leave. And somebody has to take over. And those of you that want to take over, I need to pass the fire into your heart before I go. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And, you know, some of you don't understand. If I'm singing and taking time, you're clapping in an irregular manner. As if, stop, stop, stop. What you have, keep to yourself. But want to rest. How is the church going to move forward? We're moving forward. I said we're moving forward. <laughs> Called unto holiness, church of a God, for case of Jesus redeemed by his blood, called from the world and his idols to flee, called from the bondage of sin to be free. Only listen to the Lord is called on to holiness, children of light. Walking with Jesus in garments of white, raiment on solid, not tarnished with sin. God's Holy Spirit abiding within.
called unto holiness, praise is their name, this blessed seed, great your faith now made plain, not our own righteousness, but Christ within, living, living and saving from sin. Called unto holiness, glorious thought of from the wilderness wanderings brought out of the shadows and darkness of night into the kingdom of perfect delight. to holiness, pride of the Lamb, wait in the bridegroom's return again, lift up your heads for the day draws near, when in his beauty the King shall appear, holiness unto the Lord, as we holiness unto the Lord, as we march in a long spirit. Shout it loud. Holiness unto the Lord. Holiness unto the Lord now and forever. Holiness unto the Lord now and forever. Holiness unto the Lord now and forever. Sing it again. Amen. We're looking at the word of God now. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the beautiful spirit here. Thank you for your children. Thank you for their love. Thank you for our unity in the faith and the Lord in the spirit. I pray, Lord, that your power will be mighty in every heart, every life, every family represented here. In Jesus' name, grant your people power and authority. To do the work you've called them to do. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jeremiah chapter 15, we're reading from verses 19, verse, verses 19, 20, and 21. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 19. Therefore, thus says the Lord, If thou return, then I will bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth the precious from the vial, thou shalt be as my mouth. Let them return unto thee, but not thou unto them. And I will make thee unto these people a fenced brazen wall. That's what the Lord is telling you. And they shall fight against thee, but it shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, says the Lord. And I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked. And I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. You will live long enough to finish your ministry in Jesus' name. Because the Lord is reminding us that we have got little children. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Be not afraid then. Because the Lord himself is on your side. And the Lord will grant you the victory in Jesus' name. Today we're talking about deliverance and dominion over demons. Demons are real. They are as real as the devil himself. Evil spirits are as real as Satan. Though they are invisible to natural men, they are recognized by their visible activities. Evil spirits and demons 
have carried out their evil and wicked operations in very many places as you look at the bible they have carried out their operations in egypt they have carried out their operation in babylon they have carried out their operations in ancient times and they are carrying out their operations in modern times in the primitive era as well as in this civilized era in villages as well as universities we know that these evil spirits have carried out their operations anywhere you can think of in the world but only in christ do we have deliverance and dominion not only just a temporary deliverance a permanent deliverance and not just an ordinary dominion a perpetual dominion and today as we come together i come to show you in the word of god how you are victorious already and all you need is just the instruction and the information to know how victorious you are permanent deliverance you are going to have perpetual dominion the lord is going to give to you there are three points we're going to consider number one specific activities of demons number two spiritual authority over demons number three supernatural affirmation of our dominion let's look at number one specific activities of demons this is very important in our lives so that whenever anything happens you'll not be saying well since it's god i accept it like that there are some people they accept sickness they accept defeat and they accept mature uh, premature death and they accept miscarriages they accept quite a lot of things even sicknesses and diseases and they'll say the will of the lord be done while all the time in their lives is the will of the devil that is being done but this morning everything is going to change in our lives because you will uh, you will recognize the specific activities of demons and when you recognize them anytime they show up in the ministry anytime they show up in your church anytime they show up in your beloved ones you'll be able to say this is of the devil and i'm not going to accept it and it will not stay in that church in that family in that locality in jesus name in luke chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 11 luke chapter 13 reading from verse 11 here we are told in the word of god as we look at these activities of the evil one it tells us in luke chapter 13 in verse 11 and behold there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself many people might not know that that was of the devil but it was caused with the spirit of infirmity and jesus saw her and he called when jesus saw her he called her unto him and said unto her woman thou art loosed from thine infirmity and he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified god because jesus knew it was the work of the devil and he knew that being the work of the devil he came to destroy the works of the devil and immediately that work of the devil was uh, was disposed of got to read of in verse 16 and ought not this woman being a daughter of abraham whom satan has bound it was satan that bound the woman and jesus recognized that and then shouldn't she be set free loosed from this bond on the sabbath day in matthew chapter 12 matthew chapter 12 looking at the specific activities of the evil one of the demons matthew chapter 12 verse 22 then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil blind and dumb do you see what the devil did here on the other side the woman bowed down could not lift up herself in this case now it was the spirit of blindness and dumbness and he, he and he healed him in so much that the blind and the dumb both speak and saw and sometimes when you hear uh, me praying or you hear some other people praying and you say spirit of blindness i blind you i bind you come out in jesus name you say is that spirit of blindness is it not just maybe glaucoma or this or that well we're attributing that to a spirit because that's one of the activities of demonic evil spirits yes there are people that are blind because of maybe old age or whatever but there's also people that are affected by the spirit of blindness and then we pray that the bandage that the devil has used in covering their sight the bandage should be removed immediately it will be gone in mark chapter 9 verse 17 mark chapter 9 verse 17 and one of the multitude answered and said master i have brought unto thee my son which had a dumb spirit 
the father here recognized the dumbness was because of a spirit and wheresoever he taketh him he cheers him and foameth and gnasheth with the teeth and pineth away this is epilepsy and the father recognized it was caused by a spirit and maybe you say that was his ignorance that was the superstition there they know not at all because jesus christ actually healed this boy by casting out the evil spirit and then when the disciples asked why couldn't we cast him out and then jesus said this kind of spirit will not go out but, but by prayer and fasting so it is confirmed that the epilepsy in this case was caused by an evil spirit and then it says in that verse 18 and wheresoever he taketh him he cheereth him and he foameth and gnasheth with the teeth and pineth away and i speak to the disciples that they shall cast him out not just to heal him but to cast him out because the knew he knew that that thing was caused by an evil spirit and then in verse 25 jesus saw that the people came together and he rebuked the spirit do you see that it was uh, that evil spirit that was causing the problem that jesus rebuked and he called him the foul spirit saying thou dumb and deaf spirit do you see the various names that this spirit had been called foul spirit dumb spirit dead spirit i charge thee come out of him and enter no more into him and the spirit cried and rent him it was a spirit that caused that epilepsy and came out of him and he was as one dead in so much that many said he is dead and then you hear in verse 29 and he said unto them this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting and then we understand too that as you look at uh, Mark chapter 5, you'll see the one that had a legion there. But that legion of spirits, the Lord did not cast them out one by one. They were perpetrating their evil, having their activities united together. And it was in that unity also that they were cast out. If you look at it from Mark chapter 5, reading from verse 2. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately they are met him out of the tomb say man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him no not with chains because that he had been often bound with chains and fetters and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broke in in pieces neither could any man tame him always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones and when he saw jesus afar off he ran and worshipped him and then as you have in verse 7 and cried with a loud voice and said what have i to do with thee jesus thou son of the most high god i adjure thee by god that thou torment me not they recognized jesus immediately and when you have the spirit of god upon you they recognize you they recognize your authority for he had said come out of the man thou unclean spirit again unclean spirit if you look at verse 2 it's an unclean spirit and if you look at this verse 8 it's an unclean spirit and he said what is thy name is answered and say, saying my name is legion for we are many and eventually you know the story the lord cast out that legion of spirit with just one word and when the lord cast out the uh, legion of spirit that man became completely normal and that means then all the problems that uh, you know we're thinking about maybe this is natural maybe this happened to them because they were doing this they were doing that maybe this is just uh, something you can explain away with all the medical terms yes sometimes you can do that but at other times it's an evil spirit that starts work there but whatever spirit they are we're going to have authority over them do you know that all the people that Jesus healed, all the people that Jesus delivered, in fact the commentary of the Holy Spirit on those people is that they were bound by devils, they were tormented by evil spirits in Acts of the Apostles chapter 10, Acts of the Apostles chapter 10, looking at verse 38, Acts 10 verse 38, it says Jesus of Nazareth, anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of who? 
of the devil, for God was with him. Oppressed of the devil. All those torments, all those afflictions, they were the oppression of the devil, but the Lord delivered all the people. And whatever torment of the devil may be there today in anyone here and in any one of your members, you are going to have authority over them and they are all cast off, cast out in Jesus' name. The Lord tells us in First John chapter 3 verse 8. First John chapter 3 verse 8. The second part of verse 8. It tells us what Christ has come to do. And we know Jesus Christ is same yesterday, today and forever. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. How many of them will Jesus destroy? All of them. Point number two, spiritual authority over demons. Spiritual authority over demons. Actually, the Lord has given us that authority. And because he has given us that authority, we need to make use of the authority he has given us in Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 18. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, here we find the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That's the authority the Lord has given to us. And that authority already in us will work mightily in Jesus' name. As we have that in Matthew, you also have something in Mark. In Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. If it's given to us in Matthew, and it's given to us in Mark, and it's given to us in Luke, and it's given to us in John, then we know that the Lord actually meant to gift us or to grant us the gift, casting out devils, having authority over them. Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe, and we are those believers. I said, We're those believers. And that believe in my name, they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Verse 20, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. In Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10. Reading from verse 17. And the 17 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power. Power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. I want you to notice the word all there. As a child of God and as a minister of the gospel, there is no power of the enemy that should overcome you or run you off and run you away from the ministry or destroy your ability and your authority in the Lord as you carry out the ministry. And if you have not gotten hold of it before, it is coming to you this morning. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. You will tread on them. And over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. And then who are the people that are given this power? In verse 20, notwithstanding in this rejoice, not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And because you are saved. And because you are born again, and because you have been set apart, and because you are sanctified, and because you are serving God, because you are a child as well as a minister of the gospel, a child of God and minister of the gospel, the power has been given unto you. You will do exploits in Jesus' name. In John chapter 14, you've seen it in Matthew, you've seen it in Mark, you've seen it in, John, in Luke. Now in John, in John chapter 14 verse 12. John chapter 14. I'm reading in verse 12 there. Again, he assures us here that we are going to have the same power, the same authority that Jesus Christ manifested. It was by the Spirit of God. And because it was by the Spirit of God, it's available for you, it's available for me, for everyone to verily, verily, I say unto you. 
He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father. Have you seen it very clearly now? In the watch of God, there is authority that is given to the believer. We have parental authority. And the Lord has never reversed that. We have school authority as young people are coming up and growing up. And they are under the school masters as we are told in Galatians. We have a school authorities. And then we have the master's authority. You have the centurion saying, I mean man under authority. I say to this man go and he goes and to this man come and he cometh. We have official authority. When we go to our offices, there, are, there is authority in the office too. We have governmental authority. And we know the authority of the government on the citizens. If all those authorities are there and God put them in place and he has never reversed them, the same thing we have spiritual authority in the spiritual realm. And you are preaching in the spiritual realm and you are going to manifest that authority. I said you are going to manifest that authority. It's not authority over the good people of God, authority over demons, authority over the evil things and the tormenting members of the church and the weapon of warfare the Lord has put in your hand. You are going to overcome. You are going to be victorious in Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 4 and also from verse 5. Here we are told in the word of God, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now that authority has been given to you and you are going to manifest that authority. I said you will manifest that authority. It will not just be our overseers alone, our regional overseers alone, our national overseers alone, but all the ministers, as you stand and you mention the name of Jesus, demons will bow before you. Evil paths will bow before you. And you will crush every enemy, that is spiritual enemy, to mention the people of God in Jesus' name. As the Lord was with Moses, he will be with you. As he was with Joshua, he will be with you. As he was with Daniel in Babylon, he will be with you. As he was with Paul and Peter, he will be with you in Jesus' name. And no enemy power will be able to stand before you. Point number three, supernatural affirmation of our dominion. Supernatural affirmation of our dominion. You remember in the Acts of the Apostles, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 13 in particular, God had called uh, Paul and uh, Barnabas through uh, the prophecy that came, the utterance or revelation that came in the Holy Spirit or through the Holy Spirit and they were sent forth by the Holy Spirit. We're told in Acts chapter 13, reading from verse 4, so they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost. Uh, it, it depends on the way you think about uh, the work you're doing and the work the work the Lord has placed in your hand if you are thinking uh, brother so and so our overseer sent me to such and such a place and when you meet any difficulty here this is what uh, our state overseer has gotten me into this is what our region overseer has gotten me into he sent me to this place look at what I'm facing now but if you know that it is the Holy Ghost that has sent you there and it is the Holy Ghost who has sent you for to do that thing whatever you confront over there there, you are going to be more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. So being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, they departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also joined to their minister. And when they had gone through the Isle of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was by Jesus, which was of the deputy of the country, such as Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. For, but Elimas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, who stood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, Feel what the Holy Ghost set his eyes on them. And let me wait, uh, you know, for a moment. There are some precious things in the Word of God, and we need to understand as we look at these things in the Word of God. In verse 2, it says, Separate unto me. What's the name there? No, see, look at it yourself. Separate unto me Barnabas and Saul. Who is first there? 
Look at verse 7. Which was for the deputy of the country, such as Pilate, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul. And then you come now to verse 9. Then who? Who is also called? Filled with the Holy Ghost. Set his eyes on them. Have you noticed that, you know, sometimes there are people that uh, they want to play this seniority game. Because after all, when Saul was converted and the people in Jerusalem didn't understand, wasn't it Barnabas that went for him and looked for him and brought him into the fold? And then because of the authority and because of the affection that they had for Barnabas, they accepted Saul. And then over here, when the Holy Ghost spoke, said, pray to me, Barnabas and Saul. And then even when they got there, it's Barnabas and Saul. But then the Holy Ghost that called them and mentioned Barnabas first, it now filled Saul, Paul the Apostle, with the Holy Ghost. And it's not the seniority game we're playing. It's just that when the Holy Ghost comes, and then the anointing comes, and the power comes upon that man, then the ministry goes on. And we're not fighting about anything. He called the English region overseers first. And then all these uh, language overseers that are just appendages and they're just coming behind us. What are they going to do? Let the Holy Ghost come upon everyone. And then you'll do your work. And my brother language uh, overseer will do his work. And great will be the success of the people of God in Jesus' name. But you know, playing the seniority game, I was called for. I was called for. In fact, when you read the Acts of the Apostles, it's Paul and Paul and Paul every time. In fact, when they went to the same place, when you read uh, chapter 14, it says they called the Paul Mercurius and then the other one Jupiter because Paul was the chief speaker. Because it was the anointing of the Holy Ghost that came upon him that put him there. And if the Holy Ghost has put anybody there, I don't want to belittle him. And I don't want to pull him down. And I don't want to, you know, de de you know, degrade him. I don't want to talk to the congregation and say, you know, we first started, we are the English, English overseers, and we are the people who are there. And the same thing in the, in the city church. You know, we are English coordinators, we are language coordinators, and those people, they are always behind. Let the church be the church. Let the Holy Ghost be the Holy Ghost and let the power of God come upon English coordinators and, and language coordinators and English overseers and language overseers and great will be the dynamite that will come out of that and the church will be marching unto victory in Jesus name and Saul who also is called Paul peeled will the Holy Ghost set his eyes on him and said oh full of all subtlety and all mischief thou child of the devil thou enemy of all righteousness will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord and now behold the hand of the Lord is upon thee and thou shalt be blind not seeing the sun for a season and immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness and he went out seeking some to lead him by the hand that is authority i say that is authority and that authority has come upon you today in jesus name you will put down every opposition of any spiritual enemy in jesus name and then the dead the deputy when he saw what was done believed being astonished at the doctrine of the lord i said that authority is here now i said the authority is here now will it come upon you rise up and claim that authority it is yours already i said it is yours already authority to cast out devil authority to destroy the works of the devil authority to open those blind eyes authority to open those deaf ears authority to manifest the mighty power of god you will do it because you are the man of the hour you are the woman of the hour no enemy will stand before you no demon will stand before you and then just be filled with the holy ghost every time when anybody opposes the gospel don't fight the men themselves don't fight the women themselves address the spirit in them address the evil power in them address the demons in them cast those evil spirits out and cast all those evil powers out don't be timid and don't be afraid of the witches and of the wizards and of the sorcerers and of the bad jesus and of whoever they are and of elimas but you stand in the authority of the lord you got power last night the anointing came upon you last night and you are getting more today as we get into the messages of today receiving the power of the holy ghost with 
without waiting or without delay and then the exploits of the spirit upon the people that are selected appointed anointed and commissioned by the lord the power is for you today and like paul the apostle you'll stand in that power you will move in that power you will operate in that power and you will crush all the works of the enemy by that power and the evil spirit will not be able to walk in your body not in your body anymore you are the temple of the holy ghost you are the temple of the holy ghost sickness will not reign in your body infirmity will not reign in your body and all those works of the devil they will not torment you they will not trouble you because you are more than a victor even from today you are more than a victor even from today more than a conqueror because greater is he that is in you from now on than he that is in the world greater 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 is he that is in you than he that is in the world you are now a child of victory you are now a child of victory you are now a child of victory as the spirit of god begins to move you speak what comes out of your mouth speak what comes out of your mouth when the spirit came upon paul he spoke out in authority and then he silenced that opposition that evil one he'll be blind for a season immediately the mist came upon him and was seeking some to lead him out that anointing is upon your life that authority is upon you now the word of your mouth will carry power you're an anointed man you're an anointed woman and you're carrying precious you're carrying precious ointment you're carrying precious treasure in that earthen vessel be careful what you say though because what you say will be confirmed what you say to your child will be confirmed what you say to your children will be confirmed what you say to your husband will be confirmed what you say to those members of the church will be confirmed what you say to the sickness will be confirmed you carry authority in your mouth you carry anointing in your life you're now a man of anointing a man of authority a woman of anointing a woman of authority no evil power will defeat you or ruin your ministry anymore you will subdue them you will bring them under in jesus name we pray number one you are delivered number two you have dominion and the deliverance you have is a permanent deliverance the dominion you have is a perpetual dominion and no evil power will bring you down anymore in jesus name why don't you raise up that hand of victory you are victorious you are victorious never allow a thought of defeat anymore you are not the man you used to be you are not the woman you used to be you are different from today in jesus name anywhere you go those demons will clear out of the way when you are coming as a brother as a sister they say nasim 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 is coming is coming we cannot continue here that's that lady that is the lady of power the lady of anointing she is coming she is coming we cannot continue when you get there authority gets there when you get there power gets there don't nullify that anointing with any negative language you are not the woman you used to be you are not the man you used to be you are now a man of power and authority you are now a woman of power and authority whatever you say will be confirmed in jesus name if you say your church is rich your church will be rich if you church, if you say your church is prospering it will prosper your church is victorious it will be victorious if you say you don't allow sickness in that church sickness will not reign in that church you don't allow evil in that church evil will not reign in that church don't say what a bad church is this your church is not a bad church a troublesome church your church is not a troublesome church and what a pity i mean a church like they don't say that again your church is good i said your church is good and you yourself you are an anointed minister of god from today in jesus name father in the name of jesus 
I pray, O oh Lord, for all my brothers and all my sisters who are here. I pray, O oh Lord, anywhere the spirit of infirmity, of sickness, of evil, of curse, of yoke, of defeat, of lack, anywhere an evil spirit, a negative spirit is walking, that evil spirit I command you, come out in Jesus' name. All the spirit of weakness and tiredness I cast out from the people of God, come out in Jesus' name. And then now the spirit of wisdom come upon you. Spirit of revelation upon you. And the spirit of power upon you. And anointing and authority upon your life. In Jesus name. Oh Lord, the dominion you promise your people. Every sister here, grant them that authority and dominion. In Jesus name. They will stand on their feet and they will march all over this country and all the countries that we have come from. And I pray no evil sin will be able to stand before them. Everywhere you go and every land you step upon, the Lord has given it to you. You will enter into their land and you will possess that land for Jesus. And the authority of the Lord and the dominion of the Spirit will never cease in your life in Jesus' name. And that church the Lord is building through you. The gates of hell shall never be able to overcome. When you open your mouth and you pray for the sick, they will recover. We'll hear of testimonies of blind eyes opening through you. And the lame walking through you. Mighty power being manifested through you. It is beginning now in your life. And the Lord has placed you on the platform of power. And the platform and authority and anointing. And that anointing will continue to flow in your life. And you will, that anointing will never cease. And you will see that spirit of God moving you and shaking you and speaking the word in you and when you speak that word it will be confirmed by heaven you will be marching on you will not be tired you will be walking you will not fade all the discouragement of the past and anything the devil has brought into your life that is trying to bring you down the Lord is saying arise and put on your strength O Jerusalem and you are putting your strength now shake yourself from the doors you are not the man you used to be and you are not the woman you used to be the anointing is resting upon you and the power is resting upon you you will be a different man in ministry and a different woman in ministry and then you will have dominion everywhere you go in jesus name evangelists rise up and evangelize and you pastor your pastor with power and when you speak the authority and the respect of the people it will be upon you because the lord has chosen you and the hand of the lord is upon you you are up you'll never be down you are climbing the ladder until you get to the top nothing will stop you almighty god we thank you because we know it is done confirm it in jesus name Thank you, Lord, because everything is all right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The church is marching on.